Y'all give Chelsea a hand as she comes. Come on, Chelsea. Love you. Love you. Well, good morning. Thank you, Dad. Make me emotional before I even start. <laughs> um, but yes, what he said. I am very grateful this morning to have the opportunity to share. Um, I really, I count it an honor. I have been in this church since I was 10 years old, and I've grown up with a lot of you. <laughs> And uh, some of you I haven't known that long, maybe, but you're all family to me. And so thank you for this opportunity. And um, I'm excited because God clearly spoke to me what he wanted to say this morning, what he wanted to say to the church, and what he wanted to say to those of you who maybe are here that don't believe. Uh, he's so glad you're here this morning. He loves you all, and uh, he's ready to speak to you. So like he said, we're about to eat some good food. I know the smell, it might be distracting. Um, and this week, Thanksgiving week, is going to be a, a great time, a, a time with family and friends. And if our family's like your family's, you might have some traditions. Yeah? Do you guys have traditions, holiday traditions? Yeah. Well, we have a lot of different traditions, but one of them that we hold near and dear to our heart is after Thanksgiving, going out shopping on Black Friday. Do I have any Black Friday shoppers here? I see hands going up. All right, well, it is something we always do, and uh, we go for the crazy deals and all that, but of course, we mostly, we have a good time together. We goof off, and we laugh, and we just enjoy each other's company, and I'm so looking forward to that this week. But I have to confess, this last year, I have gotten more involved with online shopping. <laughs> online shopping. If you don't know Amazon Prime, I'm gonna just gonna help you out right now. Go ahead and look it up, Google it after service, get signed up for Amazon Prime. You know, I have two little ones now, and so going out shopping these days is not really that easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And so I find myself uh, online shopping a lot more. And you're like, where are you going with this? Hold on, <laughs> I have a point. <laughs> I don't just love shopping, and I'm talking about it, but here we go. So recently we ordered a package and it was coming our way and we're tracking it online and the package said it was at a warehouse and then it was in Georgia and then it was in, I believe, New Jersey and then it was in Boston and then it went back to Georgia and it was going all over the place, this package. And I thought, wow, I don't know if we're ever going to get this. And it was going all over the place and we're on hold with customer service trying to find out what is going on with this package. Well, long story short, it did end up making its way to our house, but it took quite a few detours along the way. Uh, but we received the package, and I was, uh, as I was praying for the service today, I was reminded of that in my spirit, and it made me realize how my own life has been that way. You may today have seen your life going one way. Maybe you had an idea for what your career would look like, what your finances would be, what your relationships, everything. You know, we plan, we think towards our future of what it might look like. But then we might encounter a few detours along the way that um, we didn't expect. And today I want to talk to you about that because I believe there's people here this morning who are in that time of a detour. You're in that time of a, a maybe a hard time, a hard place. Maybe you're struggling this morning. Maybe it's one of those things I mentioned. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your relationships with your spouse or with your, your kids or with people you love. I don't know what it is for you today. Maybe it's depression. But I'm here to encourage you because God loves you and he has you here for a reason this morning. Before I just get into the rest of this, I'm going to pray and commit this service to him. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for meeting with us this morning. I pray right now, Lord God, we would just let go of anything we came in here with, Lord God, that we prepare our hearts right now to be sensitive to your spirit. God, we surrender to you. We love you, Lord God. I pray our ears would be opened, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that we would just soften those places, Lord God, that we haven't let you into right now and let your love Touch us this morning. Let us meet with you, not just come and attend, Lord God, but have an experience with you this morning and let your love cover us. In your name, amen. All right, if you could turn with me in your Bible or Bible app to John 11. 
We are going to get right into the Bible and the scripture this morning and really dig into this story. If you're familiar with this passage, this is the story of Lazarus. In the beginning of this chapter, we hear that Lazarus is very, very sick, deathly ill, and that he is the brother of Mary, the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with oil. So John eleven three. that's where we're going to start. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But when he heard he was sick, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Now, as I was studying that scripture, I thought it was kind of funny that it makes mention of the fact that Jesus loved these people deeply. And then it says, but Jesus waited. He waited two days. Now, in the natural, if you hear that the one you love is sick, what do you do? You run to be by their side. If you hear that your child or someone you care about deeply sick, you run, you rush to them. You want to be by their side. But Jesus, in this, in this passage, he, he, he waits. He waits two days. And I think there's something we can learn from that. We can take from the way Jesus responds to this story. We can learn in our own lives and apply it back. I know I'm not the most patient person. Anybody else in here struggle with being patient sometimes? Patience can be really, really difficult, especially in today's world. We live in an instant, you know, instant world. We can get whatever we want immediately. Uh, we can watch Netflix. We can watch whole series. And you don't even have to wait ne for the next week now to see what's, what's coming out in the show. Um, we have a microwave, you know. We can pop something in the microwave and we, have, we can eat it right away. And the list goes on. It's an instant generation. But... You know, many times God has called me to wait in my life, and I have not understood why, because I wanted to rush. I wanted to get over and get past whatever it is he asked me to wait, but his timing is always perfect. His timing is always perfect, and he has our best interest in mind. He says that in the scripture that we just read, the sickness will not end in death, but for the glory of God so that the Son of God will be glorified. He waited because he knew. He knew the end result, and he was confident that this situation would be turned around to glorify God. I told you that this message this morning was an encouragement, a love letter to you from Jesus. If that's you this morning, and God has asked you to wait. Maybe he's asked you to endure the storm for a little bit. To not, you haven't seen the promise fulfilled yet. You haven't seen that situation be turned around and seen the victory in it yet. I'm here to encourage you because God, he already knows the end. And he's walking alongside you and he's there with you in the wait. Romans 8, 28, we hear it all the time. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love him. But do we truly believe it when we're walking in the middle of those storms and those things and the hard times, the things that just happen in this life? Do we believe it or do we try and go about it our own way? Do we try and go about it? You know, I've learned, I'm still young, but I've started to learn that this journey, I'm going to face many things. And I want to be completely surrendered to God that when I face those things, I'm ready to walk with him, to be okay in the waiting and not lose control or say, God, where are you? But be confident that he is always with me and that he will turn the situation around and use it for his good. A long time ago, my sister, she's here today, she gave me a picture. And on this picture... <laughs> I had faced some hard things in my life. <laughs> and on this picture it said, do not just pray that bad things would not happen, 
but pray to have the strength to face them when they do. That means being okay in the wait because things are going to happen. Life is going to come at you, but he's always there. And he's going to turn even the darkest situations around for his good. Now, I had looked at that picture she gave me hundreds of times. And one day in a trying season, it hit me like never before. And it encouraged me. And I realized who my God was and what I needed to know, what victory I had in him. God has carried me in my life through those tough times, like I said, when she gave me that. And has always, always had me. Not, no matter if I made a bad decision or maybe it was just something I was facing in life that was part of life. He's always had me. You know, Jesus gave us the beautiful and free gift of salvation. It was free. He gave it to us to have. But, you know, continuing to walk with him in this life, it has a cost. We don't always want to talk about that. We want to talk about the day we surrender to him and he freed us. But, you know, laying down yourself daily and walking with him, there's a cost. There's a cost to picking up love every day, to picking up God's love and surrendering yourself. What do I mean? Well, I mean that when you're in those moments of surrender, the enemy is not happy. He's not happy when you're wholly surrendered and you're walking in God's love. He wants to take you out. That might not be the most positive thing to think about, but it's true. It's true. And if we think about it when it comes to our own lives and when it comes to our children, when it comes to those we love, when it comes to our spiritual walk, it's very serious. He does not want you to change any lives. He does not want you to come out of this storm better. He does not want you to come out of this sickness on the other side because he wants to take you out. He wants to take you out. He wants to make you ineffective. He wants to keep you in that sickness. But I did tell you I was going to encourage you today, so don't worry. <laughs> because loving Jesus and walking with him, like I said, it does have a cost. But prepare yourself, because what did he say in the scripture? This sickness, this time, this trial, it will not end in death but for God's glory. Will you trust him this morning to bring you through it? Will you trust him to carry you through? Will you trust him with the things you love most? There is such a beauty in the process. There's, there's such a beauty in the process of surrendering to God and letting him walk you through those times. I'm going to jump back into the scripture now. If you still have it pulled up. Jumping down to John eleven thirty two. Now, in the middle of this passage, Jesus was waiting with his disciples. And it said that he'd said to them, now, after two days, let us go to Judea. In chapter 14, he tells them, Lazarus is dead. By the time Jesus arrives, Lazarus has, has been dead for four days. John eleven thirty two. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him. And fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother might not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? You know, this scripture that says Jesus wept is most famous for being the shortest verse in the Bible. But in this story, it has such a power because it teaches us the heart of God when we face hard things. 
It teaches us how he views us when we face life's trials. He weeps. He weeps with you. Some of you today that are here, God literally brought you here this morning to be encouraged because you're in that time in your life. A tough situation. You are facing a literal sickness or maybe a spiritual sickness. And God wants to encourage you today. If you face those things, and maybe you've experienced things on this earth that nobody should experience. Abuse, loss, disappointment, death, sickness. You're going to be encouraged today. Maybe you've asked yourself, where is God in all of this? Like these people, they're doubting. Where is Jesus in this? Where is he? He could have intervened. Why didn't he? But he loves you. And he is deeply moved by what you have to face. Now more than ever, people I know, those who serve God and don't, I've heard the question lately, why, are bad, why do bad things happen? They look around the world around them and they see a lot of, let's be honest, negativity, disappointment and sin. If there's a God, then where is he? I've heard people say this. I'm going to offer you a very simple explanation this morning, and I don't have all the answers. But what I can figure in my, old, in my own life is bad things happen because we live in a world full of choices. And some of it's just life, and some of it is the result of sin and choices we've made. But he loves you so much, he gave you the freedom to choose. Because true, true love is a choice. Choosing Jesus was a choice that he knew. That you choosing to follow him was ultimate love. To give you that free choice to choose. And because of that, and that beautiful gift, we do live in a fallen world. We live in a world where there is sin. And there's many people far from God. But that does not mean that our God is not real. Or that he does not weep over your sadness this morning. He is there, and he is so real as we get into the end of the scripture of this story. It's going to encourage you today of the heart that God has for you. Not only is he there in the waiting, not only does he weep with you in those times, but I'm excited to tell you about how this ends in the heart we can learn about Jesus. All right, John 11:38. So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb, and now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said to them, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did not I say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But because of the people standing around it, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the man who had died came forth. Now, when we read the scripture you, you probably heard jokes being made, you know, that they're saying, surely he stinks by now. He's been dead for four days, Jesus. <laughs> but studying this scripture, I was reminded of times in my life where honestly the struggle probably wasn't so pleasant to God. Where you're in the middle of that season and it honestly stinks. Literally. <laughs> it literally stinks. And I don't want you to be afraid this morning to let Jesus roll back the stone to give you your healing. Amen. Don't be afraid of the stench. The stench of your life. He knows. And I felt strongly to say this. That if you have been facing some trials and you have turned to sin this morning. Let it go. Let it go. Lay it at his feet. Because he wants to bring you out of it. He wants to bring you out of it. 
Some of you, maybe it's not sin you've turned to. But the struggle has worn you down. Maybe you've turned to bitterness today. Bitter for the things you've had to face. Or you've let offense grip your heart. The things that are detestable to God, really, that he doesn't like. And you're scared to let him touch that part of you because it's painful. Surrender to him today because he wants to heal you. Refuse to stay in the place. Refuse to stay there. Let him do what he says in his word. Turn all things around for the good of those who love him and use them for his perfect will. His love is freely given. When Jesus speaks, everything changes. Jesus says in this passage, Lazarus has come forth. And it says the man who was dead came forth. God may be speaking to you right now. Maybe you're Lazarus. Maybe literally physically you are very sick and you have been sick and you're struggling. And he wants to heal you today. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Maybe it's spiritually you feel very far from God. Your relationship with him has been struggling. You have not understand why you have had to face the things you had. He is your hope this morning. He wants to bring you out of it. If you've been in that tomb of your life and you feel buried, you feel buried, you've been in the season of waiting, called to die to yourself and surrender, it's taken a toll, but it is not the end. He loves you, and he wanted to encourage you this morning. You know, all of creation echoes of God's love for you. As I was studying for the sermon, I found... uh, uh, research, research that scientists had put up, and this was talking about a plant. Now, this plant is named the, forgive me if I pronounced it wrong, Siempre Viva, okay, also known as the Rose of Jericho. And science, scientists have nicknamed this plant a resurrection plant. The reason being that this plant can literally go through drought, It can go through years and years of being thought dead, completely lifeless. But then when there's just a few drops of rain in this desert, and this this plant feels just a few drops of rain, immediately it comes to life. And scientists in nature call this, if you see this happening through different things, the Lazarus effect. That's what they call it. The definition being... What was perceived as dead comes to life again. (laughs) How beautiful is that? God loves you so much that he was creating everything with you in mind. With you in mind. He knew what you would have to face on this earth. The trials, the hard times. And he just said, I love them so much. I'm going to show them my love for them in all of creation to encourage them and to know that I am there with them. I am there with them. All of creation sings of his love for us. What has been dead for years in your life, what you've been struggling with for years, can come to life in a second by the name By the word of Jesus that we sang about this morning. His name, his love changes everything. It changes everything. You are worth more than staying in the place that you've always been. You're you're worth more than being content to be bitter in that place. You're worth more than being content to be upset and angry at the world because of what you faced. God is calling you to more today. Maybe you say to me, I just don't know how. I don't know how I'm going to let go of this. I don't know how God could make any good out of this situation. But we have hope in Jesus today. Knowing that following him, 
following Jesus is the ultimate gift, the relationship with him. That when trials come, when you face the things in this life that are a part of life, that are hard, we have hope because we serve the one who holds our whole world in his hands. And he knew, just like Pastor Jason said last week, he knew the end before the beginning. He has it all figured out. In 1 John 4, the scripture tells us that God's love is the very essence of who he is. He doesn't just love you. He is love today. And in Genesis 1, 27, it tells us that we were created in his image. And God is love. That means that you are love. Do you want to overcome that battle? Pick up the love of God today. Pick up the love of God was just recently sharing with some of my friends, and I said, I've been praying about this one thing in my life for so long, and I've been saying, God, help me, help me. How am I going to get through this? And he very clearly spoke to me this week. He said, Chelsea, pick up my love in that situation. Choose to love. My love is your victory. Christ's love for us. I told you that this would be an encouragement and I hope that you have felt God's love through this sermon. What we can take from this story of Lazarus is that God, he may ask you to wait. He may ask you to endure the hard time for a season. But he weeps with you. His heart is for you. When he speaks, everything changes. God is love. And you were made in his image. You want victory this morning. You want to walk out of that tomb in your life, whatever it may be. Be wrapped in his love today. Choose his love today. If that's you and maybe you've never served Jesus this morning. Or maybe you have and you feel very distant from him. Maybe you're facing addiction. Or maybe you've lost a loved one. God's love is for everybody, wherever you are. He wants to meet you today. The focus of God's love is redemption. We read in Isaiah 60, the scripture says, The whole earth is wrapped in darkness, but God rise on you. His sunrise, glory breaks over you, and the nations will come to your light victory in his name complete victory step into that light today let his love rise on you and you will have that victory you might have to wait it's not gonna be easy but his heart is for you it has always been God's love is the cure this morning, whatever you're facing. Why? Because behind the routine of this life, behind church services and, and the everyday, God's love is the reason we live and the reason we continue to reach others. He wants you to be free and for you to live again. I'm going to ask everybody to stand right now. your head and close your eyes being very vulnerable for a moment I haven't really spoken publicly in over a year and I was pretty nervous <laughs> and then God said to me Chelsea you need to ask people people that have never known me to come to me this morning you as we bow our heads and close our eyes if that's you you've never known this love that I speak of you feel like the person in this story broken far from God and you want the hope the hope that Jesus is with you 
that he will carry you, that he will walk with you in this life. He will come into your life and make you new. If that's you this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to point you out. But God is here with you. He wants to meet you this morning. So if that's you, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand while nobody's looking around. He wants to meet with you. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Those of you that have raised your hand, I am so excited for you. We want to talk to you after and tell you what it means to begin to follow Jesus. I'm going to say a prayer in a minute for you, but we want to talk with you. So after service, find Pastor Chad, Pastor Aaron, or myself and learn more about what it means to follow Jesus. He is so excited that you took the step to raise your hand and commit your life to him today. Everyone just pray, just bow your heads as I pray. Lord, we thank you for these people that have raised their hands this morning. God, you brought them here today for a purpose. God, you have spoken to them this morning about your love. Let love right now invade every part of who they are. Lord, I just pray for an experience, Lord God, to enter into relationship with you right now. I pray they would turn away from the old and, Lord, run to what is good. What is you, Lord God, right now? We pray you'd go and come into their heart, Lord God, and they would be made new. Lord, a new creation, a new person, Lord, right now. Lord God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for calling them to you, Lord. In your name, amen. Now, for those of you, yeah, let's give them a hand for the people that accepted Jesus this morning. Now, for those of you who already follow Jesus, you love him, you're in relationship with him, but maybe, maybe you've gotten down recently. Maybe the struggle or the weight has, has gotten heavy. I want to encourage you today, whatever it might be, whatever situation, pick up the love of Jesus. Pick up the love of Jesus. What do I mean by that? I mean, Give me your eyes to see how you would see this situation. God, help me to get through it. Help me. Give me victory. He wants you to let love invade every part of you this morning. So for the same, for those of you who love Jesus and you say, Chelsea, this morning, I want to be full of God's love. I want to let love touch every situation. I don't want to just give them half of me anymore. I want to give them all of me. I want to let them touch every situation in my life. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand this morning. If that's you, you want to surrender completely to God. Yes. Lord, I thank you for those people this morning who have said, I want to pick up love this morning. I want to remember Jesus to let you work through me. I want you to let me call, me, call me forth out of that tomb today. Don't let me stay where I've always been. I surrender to you this morning, God. Make me new. Let me walk into all that you have called me to this morning. Let love guide the way. In your name, amen.